Hi guys, OB Dave here. And I am Ash. Together we are OB Dave and I am adjusting the microphone. Nice to meet you. That's just what I call it. You know, we talked about the fact that one of us doesn't wear pants for these videos. Uh, yeah, it's true. And then vigorously adjusting the microphone. Um, <laughs> it's good to know I'm being listened to. <laughs> right then, um, before we get into this, make sure you like and subscribe and all that good stuff. Um, I'd just like to say Ash is moving in. Yes. Which fans of The Office folks know it's a big deal, me allowing a, a lady to move into my house because it cost me a lot of money to get it back last time. Yes. But I trust you. Yeah. We've also discussed as nice as your house is. You I don't, don't want, want it. it. No. Yeah, but well, there you go. <laughs> but um, we, I, I don't push Patreon very often because with us not living together, we get the YouTube content and we've been trying to figure out when we do live together how we can up it a little bit and yeah. just spend a bit more time on Patreon, do a bit of exclusive stuff. So if you've got any ideas, let us know in the comments section. We are thinking of doing maybe like Always Sunny in Philadelphia once a week. Or yeah, or Rick and Morty because Dave's never really watched any of it. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to see you get into Always Sunny, but there's no way you're going to get into it unless you watch it from the beginning and actually well, develop sh- with the characters. You showed me one episode and I, it was a good one, but it was a completely out of context. Yeah, so. the first time I watched it, I hated it. Because someone showed me like a few seasons into it and I was like, these guys are dickheads. And then actually watched it from the beginning and I was like, ah, they're supposed to be dickheads. But that's that's kind of like what Rick and Morty is. So you'll have to have an open mind with that one because you do, you hate a couple of the characters and then you're like, actually the character development is amazing in this. Yeah. Well, let let us know what you'd like to see. Um, And also Oscar's been designing merch. He has. It's so cute. OBD hat. And then I think he just drew a picture of me. He did. So. I'm completely left out. I'm not important. <laughs> well, we asked him to draw a picture of you, and it was just it was a picture of me again. It was basically with, with brown hair. hair yeah. <laughs> no, you didn't even do the hair, and I was like, "Where's my hair?" It just looked exactly like the picture of me. <laughs> we tried, uh, but yeah, let us know in the comment section anyway. And like I say, the reason I don't really push Patreon is because we've not had enough time to really. I think give people value for money. Yeah, There's like I agree. There's 40 videos on there that aren't on YouTube, something like that, but we'll start pushing it once we give people a bit more value for money. Yeah, off. definitely. I'm yeah. up for doing like little vlogs and like, you know, qu- answering questions and things if you guys have any burning questions and things like that. Well, we, we might do something for 50k subs if and when we get there, like a Ooh. AMA and we can do a premiere out of it. So we'll figure it out. Yeah. Anyway, right. You come from a country with quite dangerous animals, don't you? I do. So, the 10 most dangerous animals in the USA. Okay. Do you know what the most dangerous animal in Zimbabwe is? Hippo. Yes. Yeah. The, <laughs> like the three main deaths in Zimbabwe is like lightning strikes, hippos and elephants. Hippos are the most dangerous animal on your average UK council estate as well. Yeah. When you get up close and personal, it's absolutely terrifying. I've had a few moments where you leave your heart absolutely hammering in your chest and you just sort of stood there like, whew, that was close. <laughs> yeah, you've got no chance. I saw a video today actually on Twitter of a guy, it was maybe, it looked like it might have been in India, and he was some sort of spiritual guru who said that his powers made him immune to crocodile attacks. And he got in the water in what looks like a, a sort of river and it's obviously croc infested and he starts patting the water and trying to antagonise him and then you just see like full blown Jaws moment where he goes he's underwater and you just see like like that and uh, needless to say he didn't make it no I can imagine he also didn't have superpowers which I think came as a shock to him genuinely Do you know what the best thing I ever saw was um, we were on a, a school conservation trip so we spent two weeks out in the bush um, near a place called Reefer and uh, we were out doing, you had to do different things during the day for obviously learning about the environment and conservation and things. And we were down by Mana Pools, um, just when the water, the river obviously was really low for the Zambezi. And there was a couple of researchers there and they'd netted off two sections of this little like off stream from the rain, main river. And they were trying to collect fish and obviously things like that. But the guy was walking along with like an electric shock, almost like a, a what they call them, cow. Cow prod. Yeah, like that. And obviously he's trying to clear crocs and all of a sudden while he's walking slow and doing this you just see this croc <laughs> wow get electrocuted or go for him yeah. they got electrocuted yeah. wow proper flipped out the water i've never laughed so hard in my life 
Uh, yeah, <laughs> let's get into this anyway. Yes, we're, we're, yes, this is a five minute long much. intro, yeah, but sorry. Yeah, there you go. Uh, right then, the top 10 most dangerous animals in the USA. Mm. Number 10, grizzly bear. North American brown bears have a fearsome reputation to go with their physical prowess and outstanding natural weaponry. The common name, grizzly, is often used in reference to brown bear species found in the US. These include the Ursus arctus horribilis, or the mainland grizzly, the peninsula grizzly, and Kodiak bears, only found in Alaska's eponymous archipelago. The latter rivals the polar bear as the largest land carnivore on Earth. Kodiak bears have been known to weigh over 1,500 pounds, which is almost as heavy as the average bull. As evident from the prominent muscular hump on their shoulders, grizzlies are built for power. Moreover, they have massive canines, claws that grow up to six inches, and jaws strong enough to crush bowling balls. As a grizzly stands up on its hind legs, it will often use its superior strength to take down a victim. It will bite at the victim's lower jaw, which is most likely a disarming technique. Confrontations between... I'm so sorry to pause. That, like, AI imagery, it looks like it was from Skyrim. Did it? <laughs> Might have been. What's the saying? Is it, if it's brown, lay down. If it's black, fight back. If it's black, fight back. And if it's, if white, it's white, say goodnight. Say goodnight, is that yeah. what it is? Yeah. That's what I remember it as, but obviously correct us in the comments because we don't have bears in the UK. No, we. I think we did yeah. centuries ago. I feel like we maybe did, but I don't know. Anyway. Between humans and grizzly bears can occur as a result of hunting as well as camping. They have a phenomenal sense of smell and are often attracted to food that hasn't been stored properly. There have been several reports of campers being dragged out of their tents by attacking grizzlies. Conditioning the bears to campsite food can accustom them to human presence, it's thus Skyrim. increasing the likelihood of future attacks. Number nine, spiders. Black widows and brown recluse spiders share an entry on our list as the most dangerous spiders in the US. Female black widows, distinguishable by the red hourglass mark on their abdomens, are the most fearsome by reputation. They'll sometimes devour their partners after mating and own highly toxic venom. The illness associated with black widow envenomation is called latrodectism. It's described by pain, vomiting and muscle rigidity. Contrary to popular belief, the condition is rarely fatal for humans. The brown recluse spider, although only slightly larger than a US penny, is quite dangerous in its own right. The hemotoxic properties of its venom can cause tissue necrosis. Severe lesions can become infected and may even lead to amputation. Yet, like the black widows, the bite of a brown recluse spider is seldom fatal. Number eight, Coo. I don't know what it's like for you being brought up in a country with actual deadly animals, but in the UK, you're sort of brought up to believe that one bite from this spider and it's guaranteed death within 15 steps and stuff. And it's like, when I've watched videos like this, it sort of says, in extreme cases, people die from these things, but the vast majority of the time, people get really sick and survive. Oh yeah, it's it is like it, I definitely when I came over here and I, I spoke to people and they were always like so surprised, like oh it's so dangerous, there's so many like deadly things. It's like not really, and in, most of the time you don't come across them. There'd be no Africans left if it was that well, dangerous. Exactly, <laughs> just getting are, eaten every time you leave. The, there are uh, a few things where you can see like the, the you know Zimbabwe and proper go. Oh, Hang on a second. Like, like we've obviously we've got the black mamba. <clears throat> yeah. And it's not technically a spider, but they call it the rain spider. It, it's it's not an arachnid. No, it's a spider. I thought the black mamba was a snake. Yeah, the black mamba is a, sp uh, a snake. But I'm saying we've also got the rain spider. Oh right. But it's okay. not technically right. an arachnid. It's got it's an insect. It's got six legs, and they're pretty poisonous. They're pretty deadly. And if you see one in the house, it's like get rid of it. Get rid of it now. Mm. <laughs> but generally, you don't. You What's the really uh, spider it. we found in the house a couple of times? That's the false widow. False widow. False widow. But again, it just causes like illness, fever, and a swelling in the More area. More than once found them in this house. Though. Yeah. And in fact, the last house I lived in, we found a couple one. of big ones. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cougars, also known as pumas or mountain lions, have the widest distribution of any wild animal in the Americas. In the U.S. 
Populations are found across 16 states, mostly on the west coast. Why is it a leopard? Male cougars average about 150 pounds, but in... Why is it what? Why have they got pictures of a leopard if they're talking about a puma? You know, like, I didn't know to, to do the demographics, see, it's a leopard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Why <are> they... <laughs> You're too observant for videos like this. <laughs> <Is> it... <laughs> really are. West coast. Male cougars average about 150 pounds, but in rare cases may surpass 200 pounds. Even though that's about the weight of the average American male, the difference in power is considerable. Relative to its size, the cougar has the largest paws and hind legs found within the feline family. This enables it to perform outstanding leaps and reach sprinting speeds of up to 50 miles per hour, which is actually faster than a greyhound. It can also swim and is an apt climber. A cougar's muscular body is perfectly designed for grasping and holding large prey, an ability enhanced by the retractable claws on its paws. Attacks on humans are rare, but have seen an increase in recent years, mainly due to expansion into the cougar's natural range. The feline will attack if cornered or if a human triggers its chase instinct, typically by turning their back and running away. An attack usually involves a bite to the neck, in which the animal tries to sink its teeth between the vertebrae and into the spinal cord. Children are at greatest risk of getting ambushed by a cougar and the least likely to survive an attack. Num Have you seen that video that was going around on Instagram and it scared the life out of me? Because obviously, I've, again, like saying, growing up in the bush and things. Yeah. And there's been times where like the, the guide or the ranger will be like, we're being stalked. But this video, this guy was on a hike by himself and he got literally stalked for like the two where it miles. runs up to him and it's kind of doing that with no, its legs it's going. No, walking on. all the way following him and he's walking backwards trying to shout. Is he the one with the gun? No, Because I've seen multiple alone. videos of it. There's one guy no. with a gun that starts shooting in its direction to no. scare it. This one. There's one where it's, it does this thing with its legs where it's like running but kind of stops itself but it's going like that but it's right. going for the guy really? and he's just going rah, rah, just screaming no. At no this guy he's walking up a path backwards and he's you can hear him shaking but he's trying to be like brave and he's like shouting he's like occasionally sort of drops and picks up a stone and throws but this thing just keeps a little bit of distance and just keeps walking and following yeah. him it's horrifically terrifying to to know like he, he was all by himself yeah and this thing stalked him for like two miles and he just walked backwards just keeping an eye on it can't turn your back on it. you just got to go for it. Scary, isn't it? Terrifying. I think the thing with a lot of the animals like that, though, um, is that they, obviously they have hierarchies and they fight for who's the alpha and all that sort of stuff. And I think when one knows it's been beaten, a lot of them, they like, put their head down and walk off, don't they? They don't want to fight to the death. No. And that's where certain animals, if you can make yourself big, scream and shout and scare it, it'll go, all right, it's, it's not worth it. Yeah. But not, not, I've never enough. encountered one. So I was going to say, if, if, if say, it's well, hungry enough, that all goes out the window. So, mm. what if I'm hungry enough and I fancy eating cougar for breakfast, bitch? <laughs> Number seven, grey wolf. As the largest Ooh. and strongest member of the Canada family, the grey wolf was a mandatory introduction to our list. Its teeth are specialised for crushing bone, and its slender powerfully built body favors relentless attacks. Although dangerous enough on its own, the wolf is notable for its pack behavior and cooperative hunting. A pack of 15 wolves, for example, is capable of taking down an adult moose. Interestingly enough, the deer species can easily grow to be 15 times heavier than an individual wolf. While not as numerous as in Eurasia, North America has also seen a number of wolf attacks. The most recent fatality occurred in 2010 in Alaska when a young woman was killed while jogging. There's an argument that most wolf attacks are the result of an individual animal suffering from rabies. Nevertheless, wolf management programs from the United States Wildlife Service describe them as opportunistic hunters that will attack humans if given the chance. Throughout the years, encounters with hunters, shepherds and ranchers have caused wolves to develop a fear of approaching humans. Yet wildlife experts warn against actions that may encourage wolves to be in the proximity of people, as it may lead to an increase in violent encounters. They were talking about reintroducing them in Scotland a few years back. Didn't, haven't they already done it? I don't think they did it. I feel They're, like they have. They reintroduced beavers, um, yes. but when they were talking about reintroducing wolves, 
someone would have had to have been responsible for them. So essentially, like, if you release them, they couldn't release them into the wild because they would go onto other people's land, kill livestock, and potentially kill people. So the only way they could have done it, it's years ago I read this, is to have a fenced off area for them to live in, which defeats the objects of releasing them into the wild. Yeah. And also they've got um, free roaming laws in Scotland, which means that if they did fence off an enclosure, it'd either have to be registered as a uh, official zoo or people would be able to walk through it. So you'd be caging them in and people would still be able to walk through where they are. Yeah, I get and at the, the time, problems with that. At the, the time I read it, they were like, it's just not going to happen. No. That's... You've got to be someone's responsible. If you, yeah. you let them go and they kill a kid... It's a problem, isn't it? Yeah. And it's not like people, in, obviously, in the UK or Scotland just walk around with weapons. So no. obviously in Zimbabwe, if you're going out in places like that, you do take, obviously, protection if, with If you. I was a jogger in Alaska, I would have a gun on my hip, oh, yeah. without a doubt. Minimum. I wouldn't go by myself through those kind of places. It's you've still got to live, haven't you? You can't wait for me to get home from work so we can go for a jog. Yeah, I can go for a jog down the road. I don't have to go through the bush. True, yeah. <laughs> Number six, Arizona Bark Scorpion. The Arizona bark scorpion, also known as Centuroids sculpturatus, is North America's most venomous scorpion. These creatures prefer riparian areas, meaning that they're found on land adjacent to rivers or streams. The popularity of irrigated lawns and other man-made water systems have led to an increase of scorpion populations in residential areas. The symptoms associated with the Arizona bark scorpion's sting can last from 24 to 72 hours. They include intense pain, numbness and convulsions or temporary dysfunction of the affected area. The pain is so intense that victims reported experiencing sensations similar to electric shocks. While fatalities are rare, there are certain groups that are more at risk than others such as children, the elderly or people with compromised immune systems. In Arizona, thousands of people are reportedly stung by the scorpion each year. Number 5. Bull Shark With the Atlantic Ocean on its east coast and the Pacific Ocean in the west, the US faces more than a dozen shark attacks every year. While the Great White receives the brunt of the notoriety, there's an equally if not more dangerous shark. Unlike their mainly oceanic relatives, bull sharks are able to thrive in freshwater systems as well. This makes them particularly dangerous when considering the US's sprawling riverways. Bull sharks have been found up the Mississippi River, hundreds of miles from the ocean. They were also spotted in the Ohio River and in Maryland's Potomac River. Wow. These creatures have pound per pound the most powerful bite of all the shark species. There's a combination of factors that make them particularly dangerous towards humans. It's not only about bite force and size, even though females average roughly 300 pounds or about as much as the typical sumo wrestler, bull sharks are territorial, temperamental and have no tolerance for provocation. These creatures might have even been responsible for the infamous Jersey Shore shark attacks of 1916, which served as an inspiration for the novel Jaws. Number four. I didn't know that um, bull sharks could obviously transfer fresh water We've got a freshwater shark, the Zambezi shark, obviously in right. Zimbabwe, but that's that's terrifying because the Zambezi shark doesn't get that big and it's not nearly as powerful. They're pretty aggressive, but no. really angry sumo wrestler that can swim ten times faster than you and has got a massive mouth and sharp teeth. No, thank you. <laughs> it's scary, isn't it? Yeah, terrifying. Or rattlesnake. By recent estimates. There are roughly 7,000 to 8,000 snake bites that occur in the United States every year. Fortunately, the development of anti-venom has led to significantly less fatalities than in the past. Snake attacks are disproportionate in the country, with the majority of them occurring in warm weather states such as Texas and Florida. Among the various venom and serpents found across the land, there are about 16 rattlesnake species. These creatures are so dreaded that a timber rattlesnake was once put on a flag to motivate infantry forces. During the American Revolution, the Continental Marines had a motto flag of a timber rattlesnake that was coiled and ready to strike. Beneath it were the words, don't tread on me. These snakes are distinguishable by the rattle at the end of their tail, 
It's made of interlocked keratinous segments which vibrate against one another when the snake contracts certain tail muscles. This produces a distinctive rattling sound that acts as a deterrent to predators and as a warning to humans. The Western Diamondback and the Eastern Diamondback are the species responsible for most snake bite fatalities. The latter is known as the most venomous snake in North America and owns the longest fangs of any rattlesnake species. Number three, deer. Did you see the venom dripping down into his mouth? Weird, and I've never thought about it until that moment. It's like, do you think you could kill a snake with its own venom, or does it have its own like resistance? It could resistance probably kill a it? different species, but I don't think they're. I don't know because it probably never comes in contact because they have little obviously venom maybe, uh, pockets. Maybe if it was to bite itself and it got into the bloodstream, it'd be an issue. But he's eating it. <laughs> well, that's different, isn't it? Stomach acids break down things. There's lots yeah. of things that if you ingest, you'll survive. But if it's in your blood system. Fair enough. Do you know, but, out of all of these things, the thing that I've been most terrified of? Go on. The scorpion. Scorpion. I have never, ever wanted to meet one. Never wanted to see one. How often do we see people on Naked and Afraid get stung by a scorpion? It now? freaks and me out. Like, they, you know, people have had their legs gone dead for two days, but they've been all right. No, thank you. What a horrific thing. No. Dear. Well, yeah, that makes sense. They, you got barked at. They charged you. Oh my god! You. Yeah, earlier. I've, uh, I've had some. We don't have like deer per se. Obviously, we call them buck. But I, I, some wildlife that are pretty uh, aggressive. <laughs> last autumn, I went mushroom foraging alone uh, in a deer park, and <laughs> incidentally found none where I was looking. But then and at a different deer park. Yeah. Found, but it was during the rutting, and it lit, there's literally signs saying, "Do not enter past this point," which I kind of didn't go very far past if I'm being honest and uh, just out of nowhere this giant deer just comes up and it's like <laughs> like that I mean huge antlers yeah, no. and it's like proper like, barking at me and growling at yeah. me and stuff and I was like fuck yeah, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> out of here because that was one horny bastard he was either going <laughs> to He's either going to attack me and hurt me, or he was going to make me his bitch. Either make, way, it's going to do both. <laughs> either way, the, the the spark in my eye would have gone that day. <laughs> so why does Dave look sad all the time? <laughs> you don't want to Got gouged by a deer. <laughs> deer may sound less terrifying than other animals on our list, but statistically speaking, they're the deadliest. A number of species weigh several hundred pounds and certainly possess the mass to trample people to death. Males own majestic antlers some of which are several feet across and definitely capable of inflicting that severe was the guy. injuries. That was the one. However, fatal antler stabbings or brutal trampling isn't what makes the deer the deadliest creatures in the country. Most will simply choose to run away from humans rather than engage them. That's actually the crux of the matter. As deer move across their range, they end up on roadways or highways and collide with vehicles. Ah. In the US, this type of collision causes about 200 human deaths and roughly wow. $1 billion in property damage every year. Jesus. It's so it's widespread right, it? that the idea of being surprised and caught like a deer in the headlights has become a saying. While easier to avoid during the day, deer are particularly difficult to spot at dusk or dawn. Habitat fragmentation is a considerable factor in the rise of deer vehicle collisions. Today's topic was requested by Instagram follower at Ryan Thompson 5499 if you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below or follow us on Instagram and reach out to us there. Number two, American bison. The American bison is North beast. America's largest land it's animal terrifying. and nature's equivalent of a gigantic battering ram. Its charge, a devastating combination of... I've never checked the statistics, but I wonder if they are bigger than the African buffalo. Are they from the same sort of family? Are I they? don't think so. Because they look similar. They do look similar, but I'm not entirely sure, you know. I've never, like I said, I've never looked closely at the statistics or the comparison between the two. But let's just say Buffalo and Zimbabwe are terrifying. They are 
horrific creatures sometimes. I think bison <coughs> were hunted to pretty much extinction yes. in America, but there was a small herd of them in Canada that someone had taken and then they repopulated based off one herd. There was a few That's in what, Yellowstone led- Park and they've, they've brought back the population and I think it actually became overrun. That's why they started to reintroduce the wolf again hmm. as well to sort of manage It's the almost population. like nature has a way of managing itself. I know, it's surprising. We don't necessarily need to kill all the, the predators. The balance of life. Yeah. And then everyone go vegan and say, you're not allowed to cull the animals because we're all vegans and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> don't start that argument. <laughs> Mass and speed is powerful enough to derail a train, also known as the buffalo. The species' bulls can weigh up to 2,800 pounds in the wild a staggering 3,800 pounds in captivity. That's about as heavy as the average car. They own massive heads, pronounced muscular humps, and giant forequarters. Their short, curved horns are used as defensive weapons and to fight for status within the herd. Despite its mass and seemingly lethargic movements, a charging bison can get up to 40 miles per hour. To put that into perspective, Usain Bolt's speed record topped out at 27.8 27.8 miles per hour. Historically, these creatures used to roam the continent in vast herds. The spread of bovine diseases from domestic cattle and commercial hunting brought the creatures to the brink of extinction. They went from over 60 million in the late 18th century to only a few hundred thousand towards the end of the 19th century. Recovery efforts spared its extinction and the American by Why did they have wildebeest in there? I don't know. Right, you're too observant for a video like this. I told you that. It's obvious. That was that that was the wildebeest migration. Why would you put an image of wildebeest? Look, that's Africa. They're talking about America. <laughs> What's this guy on? The 19th century, recovery efforts spared its extinction, and the American bison is now mainly restricted to reserves and national parks. That's where a number of violent human encounters have occurred in the past decades. From 1980 to 1999, at Yellowstone National Park alone, bison attacked three times more people than bears. During this period, there were three reported fatalities, in addition to numerous reports of puncture wounds and broken bones. Official They Will Kill You merchandise is now available at theywillkillyou.com. Some of it is to die. That was the screaming goat. It was the screaming goat. (laughs) <laughs> available at theywillkillyou.com Some of it <laughs> is to die for. Number one, <laughs> moose. Even though they're part Terrifying. of the deer family. Terrifying. My dad came face to face with a moose I in Canada. never. He said it was a caribou, but then when I've talked about it, and like talked with Canadians about it, I described how my dad described it, and they're like, "That's a that's a fucking moose." Jesus, no! It's like it's the size of a horse. It had huge antlers, and he was just in Banff walking through town at night. And the, we were like on the outskirts, not in downtown where yeah. we stayed, and just turned the corner, and it's just there looking oh, at him. Don't. He's like, absolutely shit I, himself. Again, I've seen some videos on Instagram that make my heart thud. It, just they a, are huge, yeah, massive aren't creatures. They? Yeah, I've seen them from the bus when we've gone from like the hotel to. Lake Louise and places like that. You drive through and you can see wildlife, but that's a proper distance away when we saw him. But he, he reckons he was like that with one. Well, you see, like when it's like Métis season and stuff, they just end up in people's lawns and stuff and chase people around their cars and stuff. You just wouldn't want to leave the house. <laughs> and even though they get in a fair share of vehicle collisions, moose most definitely deserve their own entry on our list. They're creatures of many extremes, as the largest and heaviest of all deer species. Exceptional bulls stand more than 6 foot 9 inches at the shoulder, meaning they're taller than NBA superstar LeBron James. Jesus. Their massive antlers can span close to 6 feet from tip to Crazy tip, that, isn't it? so you could horizontally fit the average American male between them. The largest bulls weigh close to 2,000 pounds, almost twice as much as a grand piano. Moose are not only monsters in terms of proportion, but also temperament. When it comes to raw data, they attack more people than wolves and bears combined. They're also perfectly capable of killing both predatory species. They injure more humans than any other animal in the Americas and are second 
only to hippos in worldwide attacks. They can charge people and inflict devastating injuries with their antlers. One common sign of an imminent charge is that the hairs on its neck and shoulders will stand up. Moose are surprisingly limber and unlike other large hooved animals, they can kick in all directions. Not that you should ever do it, but this means there's no safe way to approach them. Thanks for watching. Would you rather be charged by a bison or get a roundhouse kick from a prime Chuck Norris? <laughs> well, no one survives a kick from Chuck Norris. <laughs> I was going to say, at least it'll be quick. <laughs> Take your chances with the bison or get Chuck Norris to kick the bison. Yes. And then just run away. Like, like when you're playing a video game and you just let two, like obviously characters fight each other and you just saddle the side Okay, I'll quite, just quite pick off the one that's fighting. <laughs> there's quite a lot of that on Elden Ring where yeah. you get you see and there's people fighting each other and it's like I'm out. Yeah, just leave. You stand there. over there and you get the runes when they die. <laughs> but yeah, something a little bit different for us. Quite long as well, actually. I, Interesting that they have a whole channel called "They Will Kill You." What else do they have that will kill you? Do you want to see? I do. I'm really intrigued that they've got 2.6 million subscribers. Hey guys, I'm Angela. What else would they possibly have that could kill you? Uh, Seven animals you're glad are extinct. Scary archaeological discoveries. Most venomous snakes. The Yakuza. That That's, could be pretty cool. Yeah, that could be cool. When stupidity goes wrong. Oh my God, is that guy taking a selfie with a bloody grenade? Athletes who perished in action. There, they've got a thing on Hippo. See if it's got like that, African wildlife. That no when, st when stupidity goes wrong, I'm putting that in the watch later. Yeah, there. It's something yeah, different for us. We've, we've not touched on stuff like no. that on this channel. It's really interesting. I love stuff like this because it's so fascinating. Yeah. It's something we did years ago at the office, folks. We touched it. We started going down this rabbit hole yeah. of creepy things and stuff. I'm just intrigued if they have any on, like, African sort I'm of I'm sure they will, life. but we're, like, 32 minutes in at this point. I know. I'm sorry. I just, I've had some pretty close encounters. Hairy encounters. <laughs> Hairy encounters. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, if you want to see more of that type yes. of video on the channel, just let us know. Yeah. Cheers for being with us. It means the absolute world. Really Make does. sure you like and subscribe and all that good stuff. We would really like to get to 50k at yeah, some point. That would be nice. And we're on track. We're doing well at the moment. Yeah. So, it's yeah, exciting. Yeah, cheers for that one, guys. We'll see you soon. Bye, guys. <laughs>